Hello everybody, welcome back to the Lord of the Rings The Third Age walkthrough. Uh, we are on our way up. Uh, we're actually going to get our third character here, so there will be a tiny little cutscene and then I will restart the commentary. A man, badly wounded. Wait for the wargs to approach. They'll kill him. Hold on! Hello, lovelies. You live. No thanks to you. Can't you see I was hunting them? You want to use the crows? Lure the wargs in close. They kill faster that way. You were of the Dunedain. At your service, lady. You meant to help me, so perhaps you may. Perhaps you should finish off the rest of the pack first. Alrighty. So, um, like I said, we'll get uh, there. This is our third, third party member here, Elagost. Um, both of his is kind of unique in that both of his um, skill sets are all like bow and arrow attacks. Uh, obviously, so Barathor's got the sword and uh, leadership skills. I Idriel's got swordcraft and uh, uh, like spirit. There's spirit powers, yeah. Uh, but Elagost is straight up bow attacks. Uh, the, he, there is a distinction though between the two. Uh, it seemed to me anyway. As most uh, most of his, uh, where, where is the first ones? Oh, now I'm not going to remember the name of his. There you go, Bowcraft. Okay, so he's got Bow and Ranger Guard. It seemed to me Bowcraft has a lot of like uh, creature-specific types of damage. Like uh, number one is his, his creature bane, oh, and that that's gonna increase the damage done to like worms and whatnot. Uh, and his Ranger Craft seemed to be more like um, oh I don't know what's, what's he have in there? Aim shot, I believe, is one of them. Uh, and then Piercing Might. Piercing Might is going to uh, reduce reduce damage. Uh, dealt by an enemy uh, so anyways um, the way I like to actually you know what I'll probably save my whole Elagost um, I don't know breakdown for maybe later on in this uh, in this video otherwise it may have to end up in uh, in the, the video after this uh, but I do want to actually speak about Idril um, before you know I get into Elagost um, so, you know, Barathor mostly took up the last video, and, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, just to recap, my, my recommendation is going speed and spirit on him. You know, that's for me, though, like, it, you, you can very well, you know, uh, pump uh, points into his, his, uh, power, as well as dexterity, you know, just to make him hit harder. Um, <clears throat> the one thing that I forgot to mention about him is that it seems to me that he's got really good stat growth uh, overall. Now, um, you know, when you gain a level, you don't just get the, the points that uh, that you get to decide, you know, where they go. Uh, you know, everybody gets those, and we'll say, like, from level 1 to 2, you get 2 points. From level uh, 2 to 3, you get 3 points, and, you know, so on so um, But anyways, everybody does have natural stat growth as well. And uh, Barathor seems to get decent, uh, a decent stat spread across the board. So it doesn't seem like he, you know, necessarily gets lopsided with, you know, all, we'll say, all strength or all dexterity. You know, he, he, it seems to me he gets a pretty good spread of stats. So at the end of the, uh, at the end of the game, he's just going to be powerful, uh, just, just, uh, just naturally. Uh, but anyways, that's enough about Barathor, I think. Um, Idriel, uh, I think, is the next the next character I want to really get into, and uh, Idriel is I wouldn't say she's super one-sided because you can't you don't have to just build her spirit powers. Now that's what I do. I build all spirit and uh, and and then with a splash of speed. Uh, reason being, her her spirit powers are just so good. They're you know, it's it's almost unfortunate at the beginning of the game. You just don't have any other option really for a healer. Uh, I mean, she's it. So, um, you know, that being said, I, I feel like building her spirit power is uh, is a good way to go. Only because you're fairly limited in your options. Yeah, you can you can just stick to items if you want. You know, if you've done 
if you've done a, or if you do a bunch of farming like I do, uh, you very well can. You can get away with that. But um, her, it, it seems to me, she's very much uh, oriented toward the spirit powers, and uh, and I fully take take advantage of that. Uh, later on in the game, she's got a, actually a combo that you you just can't lose the game if you uh, you know if you use it. Uh, and that's with, uh, she gets a skill that essentially lets her cast two spells in a row. And then she gets one, uh, another spell that, um, when, when, it, when your hero is defeated, they automatically revive with full health and full AP, and they immediately get to take a turn. So, you, she casts that on herself, and you just can't lose. There's, there's no way to lose as long as you keep that up. So, um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's super overpowered, but... You know, I guess that's just the way it is. That's how it all turned out. So, um, but that being said, uh, I wouldn't fully neglect her swordcraft. Reason being, she's got two, for sure, two uh, sword abilities that I really like. Uh, the first one is, uh, what is it called? I think it's Leech Inspiration. Um, and that one, what that's going to do for you is, if, if it lands... It'll gradually drain AP from the target over time, and or every so often, and give it to Idriel. Um, so that's, you know, it's just going to keep her spirit powers essentially flowing. Um, and, and actually, you know, for that matter, her sword skills as well. You know, um, you can, you know with, that, with it constantly drawing AP from the target, uh, there's a, that's, that's a great way to, to keep, keep herself with AP in order to cast more sword skills. Um, but uh, typically, that's not what I do. I, I like to I like to use uh, I like to use that skill and then um, you know just go back to casting spells. Um, but uh, she does have another one that I really like, and that's her. Uh, crip I don't remember if it's if it's crippling is it crippling strike or something like that. But what that's going to do is stun uh, the enemy, and I believe it lasts until her next turn. So. Uh, what that means is, if a, if an enemy is going to take an action between uh, between her uh, turns, uh, it won't get to take an action because it'll sp uh, spend that time stunned. <laughs> now, not everything is um, not everything is uh, uh, vulnerable to stun. Oh, and here I see Bear Barrowford finally died. So that was my first casualty. I don't think it's going to be my last, but um, we'll see. Uh, elf medicine, uh, being that I'm about, or that I just used it, uh, that's going to restore full health, or st restore your kerchief to full health. The only thing that it doesn't do is restore all your AP, which, you know, is okay. Um, I guess it'd be a little, a little OP if it did that too. Uh, but it is good to have that stuff around, obviously. Uh, you know, in this case, they're going, going down like a good, good bad. Um... <coughs> Anyways, back to Idria. Uh, I guess she does have one more uh, sword skill. If I remember right, it's, it's kind of like a bleed or it does a damage over time. So it's kind of like her leech inspiration, except it just does damage over time as well. So that's another really good one. Uh, the, the things that you want to remember, though, with those skills is if you're trying to keep enemies sleeping, uh, th those, those kind of abilities will, will wake them up. So... Uh, what I mean by that is Elagos does get a, a skill called um, Sleep Sleep Arrow, I believe it is, and uh, that'll that'll keep or put enemies to sleep for a you know a certain amount of time. Now, the crummy thing is if you if you smack something with Leech Inspiration and then you sleep it, uh, as soon as that Leech Inspiration that you know that AP drain triggers, it'll wake the monster up. So. Uh, unfortunately, in cases like that, it's uh, it's it can you know leech inspiration can be a bit of a detriment. So um, I guess just keep that in mind. Um, now, so um, just to go over the the how I like to do my stats for Idriel, it's a uh, I, I would say it's a, a a bit of a balance between spirit and uh, and speed. Uh, reason being, I, I mean speed is just good for everybody. Period. I I don't. I don't know if there's much of an argument there. Uh, the good thing about speed is that um, the more often you take turns, uh, the more damage you'll do over time, as well as uh, you know potentially you've got you've got potential for damage prevention as well. Uh, because there are so many status effects in this game, and they're so good. Uh, borderline overpowered. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, borderline overpowered. 
And the reason reason why I say that is later on in the game, um, you know, with with Elagos getting his uh, sleep arrow, he gets a couple of passives as well. That um, that not only it'll it'll make that sleep arrow affect multiple targets, and then uh, then I believe the the second passive actually uh, affects it. It's called like lingering sleep, I think it's called, and that just makes it so that uh, a sleeping target doesn't wake up. Um, so. <laughs> Or sorry, the the I should say the uh, the targets that he puts to sleep don't wake up, and uh, you know that it's just it ends up like I said uh, it ends up being super OP where you know things you're you're completely dictating the the pace of the battle. You get to focus on one enemy, and you know there's just so many benefits that come along with that. <clears throat> um, one of the things I want to mention here. Um, that I like to do, and I don't remember if I uh, mentioned it in the previous video or not, is that, um, so now that, uh, obviously, Elagost is brand new, uh, I think now, now he's probably at the same experience, or uh, at the same level as everybody else, but what I usually like to do is anytime I get a new party member, I like to put them on the field, you know, and, and kind of control them. Uh, reason being is all these little quests will uh, give them experience to help catch them up to uh, the levels of my other uh, party members uh, because otherwise uh, you know you can you, you'll end up with maybe some people that are that get a bit far behind um, <clears throat> that's how I guess it's not always the worst thing though ever or uh, either because you know that just means that your other party members are <laughs> becoming more overpowered um, but anyways uh, back to Idriel wow this is kind of got off a track there uh, but anyway, so like I said, you know, I wouldn't necessarily uh, say that it would be a good idea to to uh, avoid uh, her sword skills because she does have a couple of good ones. But I think her real power shines through in her spirit power. So again, you know, I will I will be building her uh, speed and spirit. I don't foresee myself putting any points anywhere else. I just uh, I really don't see the need for it. So that is what I'm going to do. Uh, so that being said, I guess, you know what, we might as well just jump into Elagos now. Uh, and so I've already spoke a, quite a bit about uh, his, I guess, his strengths in that, you know, he he really can single-handedly uh, determine the outcomes of, well, maybe not necessarily just outcomes, but the, the pace what brings of you battles. To this place, Ranger? I will tell you, but first we must make our way to one of the elves' healing altars. All right, little cutscene there. Uh, and when I when I say that, I mean it's mostly because of his sleep arrow. He does have a crippling shot as well, so that's going to stun your target. Um, and you know that's that's handled basically the same way as Idriel's uh, sword sword skill. And um, those aren't the only two characters that can do that. I think almost everybody's got some form of a you know a stunning a stunning blow. If not everybody, I don't I don't remember right off the top of my head, but uh, most people do. And yes, we did shelter here from Saruman, but to no avail. His spy spotted us miles away. But we pressed on, forsaking the easy southern route for a more dangerous passage over the mountains. But the White Wizard held other plans, and that route was denied us. Know this, Gondorian. We are not far ahead of your brave company. All right. These guys keep interrupting me with uh, with cutscenes. But anyways, uh, like I said, so uh, Elagos, the, you know, really determines the the pace of of, of battles with the. Uh, with the lingering sleep and sleep arrow, and uh, I forget the the name of his other passive that makes it affect all targets. But um, so uh, I guess when it boils right down to it, I guess the way I generally build him then is dexterity, uh, because I want him to hit. I don't want him missing those uh, those arrow shots and whatnot. Uh, and then speed, uh, you know, just so he gets turned more often. Uh, I guess what maybe, I mean, I don't know if I'll end up doing it, but uh, I, I, I'd say maybe then you could also build a little bit of spirit in there as well. 
just to bring his AP total up top. Unfortunately, with Elagos' skills, they're all fairly expensive. Um, so you know he can he can run into AP problems if uh, I guess if you're if you're not putting any points into that at all. Uh, maybe that's maybe that's not as much of an issue. Uh, I don't I I really don't remember anymore. But uh, you know I guess Barathor definitely helps helps out with that. Like I said, he's got that he's got a skill, and uh, unfortunately it's much much later in the game. Uh, but he will he will be able to take fifty percent of uh, everybody's AP costs off if if he uses that. Uh, again, I forget uh, forget which leadership skill that is. But anyways. Um, otherwise, I could see I could see him uh, Elagos potentially having AP issues. So we'll see how that all plays out. I'm I'm not exactly sure uh, what I've done right now, right off the top of my head, as far as his stats. I think actually I've been going mostly speed uh, for the moment because uh, I wanted to. I really wanted to see how often uh, my characters were going to be missing uh, after I used Company Valor. Uh, so obviously, Company Valor is the is the skill that um, that Barathor has there that uh, increases uh, your chances of hitting as well as uh, increases your uh, I guess your evasion chances. Um, so <clears throat> you know uh, we'll see how that all pans out. Maybe I can get away with not uh, needing to pump him with so much dexterity. Uh, you know that'd be nice, but we'll see. We'll see how that all plays out. Uh, but as of as of right now, I would suggest anyway for Elagost, uh, you know, full full speed and Dex, maybe a splash of Spirit if you want, if you feel like you need a little bit of extra AP. Uh, again, I just I, I wouldn't go strength on him just because uh, his his role to me or in my groups or the way I like to use him is, is for uh, essentially it's for status effects. So I, to be honest, I just don't care how much damage he's doing because everybody else, or other people, I shouldn't say everybody else, but other people are going to be the ones that are really, uh, or that I'm really interested in having doing the damage, and not necessarily him. He's going to be more my, you know, I don't know, CC, I guess, crowd control guy. So uh, that's what I'm going to use him for, uh, you know. I guess just like everybody else, you can, I mean, again, you can build uh, everybody however you want, and uh, and you'll probably do just fine. Um, you could, I mean, in all honesty, you could even build the Heavy Spirit if you really wanted to, and uh, completely forego the the CC aspect of him. Um, you know, and, you know, the, like, later, like I said, later on, you know, we're going to get uh, Elf Stones. Uh, I don't know if I've discussed those much, but... Uh, the elf stones. Everybody has four slots for elf stones, and uh, there's a couple of them later on that allow you to essentially use entire uh, skill kits. Uh, one of them is very much a heal-oriented kit. One of them is a very DPS-oriented kit. So, um, <clears throat> again, you know, you can really do whatever you want with these characters, and uh, you're gonna do just fine. Uh, and you can you can do some pretty crazy stuff. It's, it's pretty it's pretty neat. Um, so anyway, so yeah, I guess that's how I'm going to sum up Elagost. Unfortunately, it seemed to me with him is that he doesn't have that great of a of a natural stat growth. Um, you know, where, whereas, like I said, with Barathor, it just seems like he gets so many stats just across the board that uh, he just he's going to be he's going to be really well balanced towards the end of the game. And some of these other characters just unfortunately don't get that kind of stat growth that he does. I'm not saying that, you know, they're they're going to be crazy underpowered or anything, but frankly, it just means, I, honestly, I really think that that means that Barathor ends up being super overpowered. Uh, and then add that to the fact that his, his weapons at the end of the game are incredibly strong as well. Um, you know, so he just he just naturally gets really good damage. It's, you, you really really don't have to do anything with him, and he just, he, he just comes, he just becomes awesome. So... Uh, anyways, back to the uh, back to the playthrough here and what's going down. Um, I guess for this area, you know, there isn't anything that's uh, you know, or any enemies I would say that are incredibly devastating by any means. It's pretty much run run of the mill run of the mill enemies here. 
And uh, I would say just continue uh, continue working on your skill trees. Um, I forgot to mention there, though, there was a cut here somewhere in my video, and uh, I spent a ton of time leveling. You know, something like three hours straight, I was playing another game and um, or, or doing commentaries or something for something else, and I just kept playing and playing and playing, and I just ended up, you know, like I said, going for like three, yeah, look at there, I got about three hours into this now. So, um, you'll notice there's a huge power spike for my characters. Uh, Elagost already has that sleeping arrow, or sleep arrow. So, uh, <clears throat> from here on out, we're going to be putting that to good use. Uh, once again, you know, it's just a great, just a really great tool to, uh, to kind of dictate the flow of battle. And here are the orc chieftains that I believe I mentioned earlier. Uh, these guys are a little more dangerous than the than the lesser. I think they were the lesser captains or whatever the the guys with the banners. Uh, reason being, the these guys have the murder of crows that's quite a bit more powerful. Uh, eventually, I know somebody's gonna get hit with one of them. I think it's Idriel, and I want to say it half shots her. So. I guess we'll have to keep our eyes peeled for that, but uh, like I said, these guys are a little more dangerous than the other ones. Um, I guess I'm keeping them kind of stunned or sleeping. If the one is sleeping, I guess the other one is stunned. That should wake up, though, pretty soon here. Yeah, he's woke up now. Uh, so I would, I would actually say that it, it's, a, it's a better idea to concentrate on them first. Make sure you take those down. And, uh... Well, even... Yeah, his crit... Even his crit's pretty decent there. Um, so anyways... Um, you know, like I said, so take, take those guys down first. They're the only real threat in this area. And it's because of their, their murder, of course. I suppose if you've been building... Or if you, if you build, like, Constitution or something, maybe it's... Maybe it's less of an issue. Um, as you know, that will that will reduce the damage. But I don't ever build that. I, uh, you know, I I just select my targets. I think uh, you know, in a specific way to try to just try to avoid that. Try to avoid getting wrecked by those dudes. Here we are. All right. So let's see here. How much this does here? Yeah, there you go. That's about half. That's about half of her health right there. All right. That finishes him off. No big deal. No biggie. What were the days work for Barathor the Beast? You should call him like Beast of Thor or something. I don't know if that just sounds lame. All right, let's continue on our way. I know there's a little cutscene coming up here. Pretty quick. Yeah, it's coming up down here. And there's a chest. Ah, just don't let this. Lame. Lambus. <laughs> Actually, that stuff's okay. Oh, maybe, I think I'm in the wrong spot. Yeah, this isn't where the cutscene's at, I don't think. Yeah, my bad. My bad getting a little ahead of myself. I think it's after this whole, like, I don't know, what are these ruins of some sort? On uh, this, uh, actually, now that now that I think about it, I guess you could talk a little bit about, um, about evil mode. Uh, so this is actually one of the evil mode fights for, uh, for this region. Uh, and what that means is um, basically after after you complete every every region, you get to do a series of battles uh, a as like the orcs, and it's kind of cool. You get, you get to kill your own party members. It's kind of fun. Um, so, like I said, so this is one of them. Unfortunately, you know, there's no there's no um, like leveling for them, and there's no. You know, uh, I don't know, customization or anything like that. It's just, you, you do a series of something like four to, I don't know if there's more. There's either more or less, somewhere around four battles. 
And uh, as long as you win, you get uh, rewards, and then you uh, essentially you apply the the rewards to um, your your game. And uh, it can be kind of fun. Uh, they're kind of they're kind of fun to do, and there's they, they've got some decent rewards too. Uh, the really cool thing about it is if you um, if you've already beat the game once, uh, what you can do is start a brand new game and then save. And then you can load the evil mode off of your, like, your previous playthrough. And then uh, apply all those items to your new game. So, you know, you can, you can get some really, really good items really, really early. Unfortunately, uh, my saves are all on my PlayStation 2 memory card. And I think my PS2 died on me. So I'm not able to, uh, to access those files. So I wasn't able to, you know, start a new game with with a bunch of cool items which would have actually been really nice too for uh you know being that i'm playing on hard mode but uh that also maybe would take a little bit away from uh may maybe a little bit out of the fun i don't know maybe maybe not it's hard to say uh but anyways uh you know like like i said so that that evil mode's kind of fun once we actually get to the end of end of this region i'll uh, i'll go through the you know whatever those the four fights or whatever it ends up being uh, just to show you see what do we got going here I think shield of courage that is that the next one that I'm working on I really I kind of went crazy with the leveling uh, not only leveling but you know getting those getting those skills uh, if you can you know if, if you spend the time you know doing that at the beginning of the game or you know essentially really whenever you want to <clears throat> you can become you know, quite powerful, quite early. And, uh, you know, not just having the skills, but knowing knowing how to use them and, and what works well together is pretty important. Uh, here I noticed, actually, I, I went too far here. I went the wrong way. It's because there's, there's, there's that chest over there that I, that I missed. That I'm going to have to go back and get again. <coughs> Excuse me. So that was a little unfortunate, but I kind of don't... I'm not wild about uh, about backtracking, but you know what? If it's got to be done, it's got to be done. Alrighty. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately for this game, there is only one speed. There is no sprint. There's no dash. There's no no form of speed uh, boosts outside of combat that is obviously we can we can boost our speed a bit in combat but it's not doing us much good right here is it all right what do we get elf medicine all right I don't know elf medicines that at least pretty decent <coughs> I'm always disappointed though it seems like when I when I open up a a treasure chest and it isn't uh, armor or something inside, you know? I don't know why. I guess the... Uh, I guess I just like... I like... Um, the other cool thing about this is that, uh, you know, your armor's got different stats. Um, for the most part, uh, your weapons are generally always get better. Um, and it's usually always better to equip better weapons. Uh, reason being is they've got... Uh, all the weapons have like uh, damage modifiers on them, and uh, if you go in there and, and check them out, they'll it'll you know it'll say it on there. But um, for the most part, every time you get a weapon, it's going to be better. Uh, like I said, you know, again, for the most part, that's not always the case, but uh, it usually is. Uh, but that being said, um, on on most of the items, not all of the items, now again. But most of them, uh, there are stats. So, you know, if you're trying to build one way and, um, you know, you found that, uh, you know, with this one piece of armor has got a bunch of a specific stat that you really like, uh, you know, you don't have to equip something else, you know, even if it's got necessarily, you know, uh, maybe we'll say a, a better armor value on it or something, but if it's got something like, we'll just say like 20 speed on it, but, um, you know, it's a 10 armor reduction in a, a, in a new piece of armor that you get. I would maybe stick with the speed. Um, 
you know, I just, uh, there's, there's something to be said for that stat. What are you doing? You want to be sure they're good and dead. Some are mighty hard to kill. Not even these sacred places are safe. How do I know I can trust this one? I vouch for him. In the name of the Lady of the Galadrum. That is good enough for me. And how do I know I can trust you? Where did you get those wounds? At the hands of a Mordor orc, whose life I intend to shorten considerably. In the pass of Kahadras, we were attacked by goblins. We slew all but the orc, who escaped with something of great value to me. Who is this wee ranger? I was in the company of a dwarf. A friend, actually. And what did this orc take from you? You help me slay him, and you shall find out. You rangers from the north are full of riddles. And who are you to speak for a ruler of elves? You must help me return to Lothlorien and warn the Lady Galadriel of these dangers. Then you will know all. We should find one of the enemy's altars. After what I did to him, that orc will be in need of healing himself. Come, Gondorian. We shall attend to my matters in due course. <laughs> Apparently, <coughs> orcs make pretty good makeshift chairs. So, anyways... <clears throat> uh, what I was saying about the about the armor, you know, as if there is if there is uh, pieces of armor that you that you come across and, and you really like the stats, but it, you know, maybe doesn't necessarily have the armor value that you know of something else. It, it still may be worth hanging on to anyway. Um, but you know, I guess, uh, and I don't know if it's always true, but it seemed to me like a lot of the a lot of the armor, though, so basically there's like armor, there's like main pieces, I would say, and then there's kind of like accessories, like, uh, I'd almost say like your, your chest pieces are, you know, fairly, th that's where you're probably going to get the bulk of your armor from, uh, but other things like necklaces or belt buckles or, you know, that other, that other kind of stuff like that, those are more like accessories, and it seemed to me anyway that, um, and it may not always be the case, but a lot of times that kind of stuff will will have uh, a lot of your like your just your raw stats and uh, your actual armor pieces will you know have the armor uh, on it so you know hopefully there isn't always a time where you're like oh my gosh you know I'm gonna miss or lose 50 armor if I stick with this piece as opposed to another but it's got all these stats that I want so I don't think that that'll happen much so tell us Ranger what happened back there in the past it was a bewitched fight, voices echoing down from the mountains. Then lightning struck all around us. The dwarf fought like one possessed, but a landslide carried him away. Before he fell, he gave me a map, presented to him by Elrond of Rivendell as a gift of friendship. But I could not withstand the dark powers that ruled the mountain that night. While I lay there burning, that Mordor orc ripped the map away and fled down the mountain. That map revealed the location of the secret entrance to a forgotten realm. Moria. Yes, the greatest city of the dwarves, whose location was lost during the Great Wars. And whose halls are rumored to still be stalked by a terrible monster. And what of the dwarf? If that map leads us to Moria's hidden gate, I expect we shall find him nearby. It would take more than a few goblins to stop that dwarf. Alright, and there was our other 
little bit cut scene there. All right, let's see what's back here. Here's a couple of trolls that were turned to stone. I don't know if these were supposed to be the ones. I don't think they were actually. Maybe, who knows? Ah, uh, from the movies anyway. I only see two of them here, and I know I saw one of them earlier. But again, I don't know if they were supposed to be the uh, the three famous trolls. But um, anywho, let's keep a move on here and keep grabbing the treasures as we come across them. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, I think I think I kind of summed up Elagos pretty good as well as Idril for this video. It's pretty good. I feel like I did a pretty decent job of explaining. Um, you know, that being said, though, uh, you know, I always like to hear about the different ways people build their characters. So, you know, if you've got uh, if you've got anything you'd like to add, you know, and you're watching this and you want to, uh, you know, share builds or whatnot, uh, you know, toss it in here. Let me know. I'm always curious to hear people's opinions on on characters and what they like to do. Uh, and what do we have back? I know there's a there we are. All right. I knew there was a treasure back here somewhere. Defy Shadow. Meh, okay. Uh, and then we're going to need to make a trip up to the top of these stairs. Uh, so there's a couple of elf altars, I guess, in this region. I think there's... Is it three of them? And uh, I think they've got elf stones at each of them. Actually, we already grabbed one, I think, didn't we? No, I can't remember. I guess we'll find out here if it says two of three. Take care of some baddies first, I guess. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so the uh, the elf stones, um, I kind of feel like those are... Is there kind of a way that you can set your characters apart? I don't know. The, the bonuses, unfortunately, are fairly minor. Um, so it's not, and, you know, you don't get a whole lot out of them, but... Oh, there you go. One of two altars. Okay, that... Oh, whatever. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So there's light altars, and then there's artifacts. So we're at two of four now. All right. Kind of forgot how many there, there are around here. Uh, but anyways, so here are the, the elf stones. There's different levels of them. There's cracked, there's like polished, there's ancient or something like that. And they're generally just going to get better as the game goes on. Uh, and so what they'll do is, you know, as they get better, they'll, they'll just give you more stats. So like a, a cracked elf stone of health will only give you, you know, X amount of health, whereas the next level up will give you more. Uh, and then there's usually a very minor stat increase uh, with those as well. You know, one of them's got uh, plus one constitution. One of them's like plus one dex. So, you know, again, there's minor uh, stat gains. They're, they're not going to be, you know, uh, I don't know. It's going to be minor. So I guess just, oh, uh, well, I guess we could just leave it at that. Uh, but anyways, we got to cut this. Boy, I came up to the end of this video really fast. Uh, so uh, hopefully you guys are liking the videos. Uh, you know, once again, you know, if you've got some build ideas or the ways that you you like to build your characters, toss them in the comments. Just let me know. And uh, I guess stay tuned. Thanks for watching.